Hey everybody! It's Aaron and Matt with Magic Unicorn. Unicorn. We're super excited because our friends at Conwood Medical Center are giving us the opportunity to install an off-the-shelf commercial solution filled with empty promises and licensing fees in perpetuity. In perpetuity. A super complex system, intense frustration, free of charge. Custom build the best video streaming, conferencing, and recording system in the world. In the world! The world? Well... For sure better than yours anyway! Okay. We're going to give them a system that's expandable, has more functionality, and is easier to use than anything you can buy. Plus, this is going to save the money, and we're going to turn this into this. Having designed and built similar systems on Linux, Windows, and Mac, we selected Apple for its ease of use, Noise. compatibility in most use cases, Noise. and minimal maintenance. Noise. Not to mention, there are some great tools that are unique to Apple that really aid in content production. We'll talk about some of those in the capabilities section. Zolotech did a great deep dive video on features offered in macOS. You can check out their video over here, or we have a link in the description below. This is a pretty serious system. Yeah. Maybe keep in mind that these are important people who do important work. But don't sweat it, have no fear, we're saving lives up in here. You want them to take you seriously. You know what? I think I'm picking up what you're putting down. The heart of this system lies in the new Mac Studio. It's built on Apple Silicon with the M1 Max chip at its core. It's extremely powerful and extremely compact. It has a lot of I.O. On the back, there's four Thunderbolt 4 ports, which we're going to use to drive four different sets of screens inside the auditorium. A 10 gigabit network port for fast transfers and built-in future-proofing. USB-A ports that we're going to pair with a dual hard drive docking station for easy transfers and additional storage. An HDMI port it's going to drive a monitor dedicated to the system and an audio out which we're going to pipe to the audio system. The front has additional USB-C ports and an SD card reader. How's that? I'm not sure that's quite what I meant. Well, if you need me better, I'd like to see what you got. Funny <laughs> you should say that. But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills I've acquired over a very long career. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We thought this out. We're going to pair this to a four by four HDMI matrix, which will give us independent control over our four audience facing video outputs, which are the outside wall, the inside wall, center stage, and a presenter screen or teleprompter. There will also be a non-switch dedicated display for the workstation itself. Each of our four video groups will be sent to an HDMI splitter where the signal will be mirrored between screens in the back room and ones in the auditorium. We'll talk about how that helps us in the capability set. We're going to split off of one of these inputs so that a guest can plug directly into HDMI if they need to use their own equipment. Then, we're either going to mount these on an electric standing desk or use a wall mount adjustable work center, depending on guidance on how to best utilize this space. That was pretty good. Thanks. You ready for the best part? In the video part of the system, in the auditorium, we're gonna put two TVs on the outside wall 
two TVs on the inside wall, a video wall at center stage, and a presenter screen with a teleprompter. The two purposes of the video wall are one, splitting one picture into pieces in order to make as big of a screen as you want. Screen size has limitations and considerable cost with the current TV technology available. The advantages of this over projector screens are that you don't sacrifice picture quality or have brightness issues. So, we're going to take four large big screen TVs, turn them into one for a movie sized viewing screen but with TV picture quality. Secondly, the video wall gives us the ability to display multiple input sources at the same time for say, presentations or during group events. For the TVs on the wall, we're going to use Samsung's The Frame. This TV has a lot of capabilities built into it, many that you could grow into, such as the multi-view function. If you want to see a good video on that, check out Aaron Lawrence's channel, which is linked in the description below. It has a matte screen and motion and light sensors that support what's called arc relief. Instead of a bunch of big black rectangles on the wall when the system's not in use, the frame defaults to displaying arc. From the comments I've read, people have actually confused these with real paintings. For a room where many important things happen involving many important people, well, it's the little details that matter. Now, if you want to cut costs, another option I've read about recently is the Amazon Fire TV Omni series. Link in the description below. This also has an art mode, but I don't believe it has matte screen. It also doesn't have an art style frame. A lot of it depends on what you want to portray to people when they walk in the room and how you want them to feel when they're using the room. For audio, we're going to try to make use of some of the equipment already in place. We're going to output audio from the Mac to the Crown CDI 1000 amplifier, which then runs to eight Bose speakers. We're using an app such as SoundSource to control audio mixing. Because we're piping audio through the computer, it's possible there will be too much latency, which is delay. And if that's the case, we're going to split out the audio signal where USB will go to the computer for recording and either an XLR or a 3.5 millimeter will go directly to the speakers by way of an audio mixer like the Shure SCM268. We'll put a link to one of those in the description below. For microphones, there are separate functions, recording, streaming, and the PA system. We're going to use mics built into the cameras to capture and record audience discussion. In our experience, they're high quality and have no problem capturing audio in a room this size. Using the camera mic saves money and reduces complexity. We're going to put a Shure MV7 USB mic on the podium. We chose the MV7 because it's a professional microphone that will meet all of your needs for conferences, streaming, and recording, but it's not over the top. It's a good balance of need and want. The presenter will also have the option to utilize one of two wireless lavalier microphones, should they wish to be mobile, ambulatory given the organization. Lastly, we want to purchase a portable PA system. The cost is minimal, but it ensures backup should there be any issues with the primary audio. Also, there's always a need for a PA system for outdoor and other events. For cameras, we're going to use a few different types. We'll make sure there's as many cameras as needed, but none that aren't. We're going to use a combination of trapping cameras, 360 fisheye ceiling cameras, iPad, and network cameras. Right now, we're thinking a tracking camera for the stage, an 
up close tracking camera at the podium. There is the possibility of using that as a document camera as well. It's basically the digital version of an overhead projector. The fisheye 360 camera will show all the people in the room. If we use something like Ubiquity, or if you wanted to get into some AI, you could have it count people or really extrapolate all sorts of data. The network cameras have great sound quality and a great picture, but they also allow a second stream to be recorded 24 seven for security purposes and build in some redundancy. Let's talk teleconferencing. You can use any software you want, Teams, Zoom, Jitsi, etc. And being Apple, you can use FaceTime too. Your limits are mostly going to come from the software. If you can break out each conference member on a separate window, then this system, you could put each person on a different screen. You can stream to your platform of choice with multiple camera angles, options to share screens, and multiple microphone inputs with real-time voice isolation and noise canceling. For example, this is what it sounds like without voice isolation on. I've obviously added some additional background noise to kind of highlight the difference. One of the features that we built into this system that people will appreciate is to have a teleprompter screen with real-time voice scrolling. This makes it easy to give great presentations or lectures without the need for someone to manage the If you made it this far, let us know what you think in the comments section below. If you want to see more content, like and subscribe. We just dropped it like it's hot. One, two, three.